Hey guys, it is Mike from Baltimore Rides here. It is Monday, July 31st, last day of the month, and um, I am back in the saddle. I actually ended up taking a long, uh, long couple days off. I took the Saturday because I had things planned, and then my wife was not feeling so great, so I took the Sunday off and uh, was Mr. Mom and um, hung out at the house with the kids and let her have a day of uh, a day to rest and kind of get over what she was going through. So I am back in the saddle. Obviously last week stunk given the fact that I missed two busy weekend days. Um, I want to say I finished the week at about 600 bucks, which is not horrible. You know, it's pathetic numbers for what I expect of myself. Um, but given the fact that I lost two, two of my busiest days, um, I'm okay with it. You know, it's that's part of being self-employed is knowing when to hold them and when to fold them and when to take a day off. And I'll be honest, the day with the kids yesterday, just kind of R and R. It did me some good. It did uh, my kids some good. My my wife, you know, pretty much stayed in bed the whole day getting rest. And that's what you got to do. I mean, sometimes that's just the way the cookie crumbles. So, you know, Saturday I had plans. Um, I was in the city doing something, and it was a little bit more complicated, but. Um, either way, I wasn't on, you know, collecting rides. So it's Monday. It's a new week. It's a new month. I'm going to just attack and uh, we're going to see what we can do. There's a game tonight. The weather is beautiful. It's a little bit hot, but um, sunny, no rain in the forecast. So I think it's going to be a great night in the city tonight. I really do. And we will uh, we'll do our best. The airport activity from what I can see right now does not look amazing. Um, there's a couple peaks and valleys, but you know, I'm not, um, I, I'm just, I'm still not a believer. Um, so I just, I'm going to stick to the city. I'm going to use both Lyft and Uber. And, uh, if I get pulled down to BWI, then my, here's my new rule is I'm going to wait 40 minutes, 40 minutes, because it's 20 minutes to get back to the Baltimore. So if I sit for 40 minutes and then drive for 20, I'm going to give up one hour. And I'm only going to do that one time. So if I wait 40 minutes and I don't get a ride, I'm not coming back the rest of the night. If I don't, if I wait 40 minutes and I get a ride um, and it's fruitful, well, then maybe the next time I come back that way, I'll take another chance. But I've got to set some limitations for myself because if not, what ends up happening is BWI becomes a social club. Um, and for the, for me working five to midnight or five to 2 AM or whatever you want to call it, you know, it's not the same as these guys that come out at like six in the morning and work 12, 18 hours, just grinding on the airport all day. You know, they can wait two hours for a fare with their engine off doing nothing. If they're going to work an 18 hour day, I'm trying not to do that. I'm trying to work smart, not hard. Um, you know, whereas so lots of little five, seven dollar fares in the city gets me the same distance. Um, and I do it with basically the same amount of miles. It's not one customer, maybe it's seven, you know, that, but it adds up to being the same amount of dollars. And at the end of the day, that's really what matters. Um, and I've been, I've been, you know, a little bit lucky, a little bit, uh, you know, specific about who I let in the car and who I don't. Now, does that mean I don't mind? I don't mind riding in the city. I don't mind riding in North Baltimore. I don't mind riding in a lot of areas that I think a lot of the other people are chickens about. But that's me. You know, that's my being able to take a look at somebody and say, hey, does this dude look sketchy or not? Um, most of the people that I've had in the car with me have been super cool. Um, even the ones that, you know, when you judge a book by the cover, I might have flinched a little bit and said, eh, I don't know about this one. But the minute they got in the car and we start talking, they're cool people. And, you know, that's the trick that I think I use to insulate myself from some of that risk is um, they're just good people. And if you get to know them and you don't prejudge people and you don't, uh, you're not a racist and you're not biased about a lot of shit, then you're going to get the fares that other people aren't taking a chance on. And those people are going to be appreciative. You know, some of my best tips come from people that like that. So, you know, that's all I'm going to say. You know, young people don't tip. No kidding. Young people do not tip. If you're 20 something years old and you're listening to this video right now, let me give you a piece of advice. 
Tipping makes the difference in a service industry. It makes the difference. Whether it's a wait waitress or waiter at a restaurant, a bartender at the bar, a Lyft Uber driver, um, you know, what we do without tips is a lot harder. It really is. And it makes the difference between us breathing and us living comfortably. And, you know, I don't know what you were taught or what you believe in or what you don't believe in, but, you know, if you can't tip somebody 10%, which on a $5 fare, 10% is 50 cents, guys. Come on, let's do this easy math. Just move the decimal one over. You know, if you can't tip somebody a dollar that just drove you across town in a nice clean car, played music that you felt was appropriate, you know, didn't have the, the radio blaring something that you didn't enjoy, um, et cetera, et cetera, had a good conversation with the person, connected with them in some way, shape, or form. You know what I mean? Come on now. If you can't appreciate that person and everything they did for you, then you're not you're gonna have a hard time finding appreciation in life. And if, and it's gonna be a full circle. Other people aren't gonna appreciate you if you don't appreciate them. So that's my little spiritual message for the day. Um, you know, karma, you know, you gotta have a yin and a yang in life. You've gotta be able to see the um, you know, both sides of it. You know, the intellectual side, the mind and the spirit or the heart. You got to see both. And the mind is what gets people greedy. You know, money, money, money. I want mine. I've got it too. I'm not preaching like I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here, folks. I know that. But you got to have heart as well. And you got to know when to do the right thing. And you got to balance them both out because too much of either one will get you screwed um, in this world. Too much of either one will get you screwed in this world. So I'm heading into the city, guys. I'm on 83. Um, I'm going into my Harbor East, which is my starting point of the race tonight. And I will touch base with you guys later. Sorry I rambled. That was kind of my public service announcement of the day. Um, but just thinking about it gets my blood boiling a little bit that uh, my generation is kind of like the last generation that understands tipping. So if you're out there, if you're younger than me, I was born in 1977. I am a Gen Xer. Um, but if you're out there and you're coming from a younger generation than mine and you don't understand tipping, you don't know when to tip and when not to tip, you think tipping is optional, whatever, you know, ask me. Hey, send me a comment saying I don't, I feel uncomfortable tipping or I don't know what I'm doing or how much or why should I tip or who do I tip. I'll help. We're all in this together, guys. If, if you don't, you know, if I hide the knowledge in my brain and I don't share it with people, how am I making the world a better place? So I'm going to wrap it up here because this one's a little bit rambly. I need to get more caffeine in my brain. I'm kind of a little scrambled eggs right now. And uh, we're going to just hit it hard and I will touch base with you guys later. Wish me luck. It's Mike here from Baltimore Rides. My Monday night. Um, this is midway through my night. About 8.45 p.m. I just wanted to touch base with you guys. Um, the night is actually going pretty good so far. I did a couple city runs and then I made my way down to the airport um, and I was able to get two runs out of the airport in a very short amount of time. Less than 30 minutes wait both times. The first one was kind of soft. It was to Jess up for about, I don't know, 15, 16 bucks. Um, but the second one is the one I'm on my way back from. It was all the way to the far side of Gaithersburg. Um, like a $50 run, um, plus a tip, plus tolls. So that one was pretty profitable. I've got my destination mode on. I'm heading back towards BWI now. I got a couple pings when I came, uh, you know, when I got done dropping off that customer. But for some reason, my GPS was giving me trouble. I had to reboot my phone. Um, for some reason, I just couldn't get a GPS signal. So... Uh, you know, I was having a pain in the ass trying to connect and find directions. So I, you know what? I said, screw it. I canceled the one ride, um, do not charge rider. And then I rebooted my phone and it seems to be working fine. I think sometimes when you get one of those long distance um, routes that takes you, you know, to another cell network, um, you either have to reboot your phone or update your profile, do something to kind of reconnect to the network because for whatever reason, my phone, which normally is like a tank, was just having trouble identifying a GPS signal. So whatever, I just rebooted the phone real quick, but I lost a ride that I could have picked up um, 
I don't know how far of a distance it was. I don't know anything about it. Uh, you know, it could have been a three dollar ride, could have been a thirty dollar ride. You just don't know. So that's where we are now. I'm on 495, heading back in that direction. I do have destination mode on. I don't know if I'll get anything from it or not. Um, it tends to be spotty at best with destination mode, but um, the airport was moving quick. So um, nine o'clock was supposed to be the next wave. I'm gonna be a little bit late. I'm probably not gonna get there until about 9.30, but um, you know, we'll see if we can get one more city ride and then, or one more airport ride, and then we will head into the city and grind for the remainder of the evening. Um, I'm just shy of a hundred bucks now between Uber and Lyft. Um, the majority of that is Uber, but I did have a couple Lyft rides in Baltimore um, when I first got started. So we will, uh, we will see how we finish the night. I'd love to do 200 on a Monday and just come out strong this week. Um, I think it's doable, I really do. Um, but I just need to, I need to grind to do it, so. Wish me luck, and uh, I will touch base with you guys later. Bye. Hey, guys. It is Mike from Baltimore Rides here, wrapping up my Monday, July 31st into August 1st um, video. And just wanted to kind of give you guys some real quick final numbers. I'm actually sitting outside in my apartment um, right now. I got all the way home before I realized I hadn't done a wrap-up video. So, uh, busy night tonight. Um, honestly, it was really a good night. Didn't end up in the city that much at all. I did a little bit of the city driving in the beginning of the night. Then I headed down to the airport and um, that actually paid out tonight. So my first airport run was a short one to Jessup, which was only about $19. But I got a ride back to the airport um, and then I sat in the queue for a few minutes, got a ride... Um, a lift ride from the airport, surprisingly, that was really, really short. It was only like $8 or $7. And Lyft sent me a text message saying, you know, we apologize. Sometimes short rides happen. Please go back to the airport queue and you will get a uh, reduced number in line. So that's what I did. I turned off Uber. I drove right back to the airport queue and they put me in line at number two, which was great. And um, I got in my car, I sat in for a few minutes, and I got another ride from the airport right then and there, which was all the way down to Gaithersburg, the far side of Gaithersburg at that, um, which was a great fare. And I bounced around down, da um, down in that area for a little while, and uh, it just worked out really well. And then I started making my way back to the airport again, and just, um, you know, got another ride from the airport, which was another good fare. And just, it was a good night. I was just down kind of like south of the airport most of the evening. Um, you know, so it was just really, really a good, good night. I think I ended up almost a tie 50-50 Lyft and Uber. Uber was like $97, um, Lyft is, Lyft is harder to add up because you really have to go in and just basically add it up by hand because the number they give you is their pre them, them taking out their money number, which I really don't like. I like how Uber's number is what you're actually earning. So my Lyft number is, I want to say $80, $75 paid to me. Um, you know, it's, and that's not bad. I mean, it's, really good. It was like 95 before all their fees. So I think it was like 75, 80 after. Um, I made about five bucks in tips cash, which is not a lot, but most of the people tipped me electronically. So electronic tipping is definitely migrating to be a thing and I'm cool with that. So uh, almost $180 tonight, guys, I'll take it. Um, you know, that's great for a Monday night. Starts my week off strong, which is really what I needed to get back in the saddle after taking two days off um, and a Saturday, Sunday, especially. So I'm thrilled with these numbers. Great start to my week. Um, we're just going to kick ass this week and make a lot of money. So um, that's it. It's a short wrap up, guys. And uh, I apologize, but I'm exhausted. Long night. My eyes are really dry and tired. I need to get eye drops. And, um, you know, maybe my uh, my new tattoo, which I don't know if you guys can see, it's half of a yin yang symbol and um, it's also a comma 
So it's kind of like a double-edged um, tattoo. It represents two things. Obviously, half of a yin and yang, you know, really kind of represents me feeling like, uh, you know, I'm part of a whole right now. And I do feel that way. I sometimes feel like I'm, you know, I'm missing a piece of me somehow. And um, a comma, obviously, you know, from a punctuation standpoint, represents a pause between two things um, or a separation between two things. And I feel like sometimes, you know, this new transition in my life, going from my old career and my old role of being a manager and blah, 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 into this new phase of my life is just that. It's kind of like they, uh, like I pause between one half and a, and a transition. So um, it's a very uh, symbolic tattoo for me, and it's kind of it kind of place marks a um, a real big transition in my life. So there you go. You got a, a minute of spiritual ad, spirituality out of me, and then you got some earlier when I started the video. So I guess I'm in kind of an introspective mode today. Um, but you know, great great day, guys. I'll wrap it up on a positive note. Um, Uber and Lyft. You know, it's a good synthesis. Would have been a tough night if I'd just done Uber. You know, a couple of my my bigger fares were Lyft fares. So, um, as much as I have frustrations about Lyft, um, I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth, guys. I'm happy to be doing both. I'm happy to be making money. Customers are really what it's all about. It, I don't care what the Lyft Uber icon. Um, it's an app. It's just a way to partner me up with people that need a ride, and then I can take good care of them, and they can tip me, guys. And that's what this is all about. So, um, I'm just going to keep on rocking and rolling. Um, the airport, love-hate relationship. Tonight, I'm going to say love. There you go. Have a good night, guys. I'll see you guys tomorrow.